Hello everyone, my name is Tori Tracy and I'm Assistant Professor of Interior Design here at the University of Arkansas. And I'd like to ask you a question. What's the difference between a house and a home? Well, a house is what we live in. It's a collection of materials that form a structure that protect us from the elements. When we think of a house, we typically think of a structure with an angled roof, a window, and maybe a door. A house is where we cook, where we clean, where we sleep, where we study. But a home is something much more special. It's a place where we spend time with our family and our friends. It's a place where we feel comfortable and create long-lasting memories. A home is special. It's where we belong. Although a home, like a house, can also consist of materials, it is something that exists in many forms. It is a product of its environment and the people that live in the environment. Although homes may look different throughout the world, they all do the same thing for the people that belong to them. I'm Cameron. I'm a third year architecture student and I'm excited to welcome you to this home segment where we'll begin to help you brainstorm ideas for projects in your own home. In this segment, we shift from an overall look at our neighborhood to a look at our family living environments inside and outside. Here we will look at how to start the design process in your own home and we will show you how to get started. Spaces and places change over time as the use changes, styles change, and pieces are added or subtracted. These changes alter our perception of a space and give us a new way to experience. Architects are constantly evolving and producing new ideas for how to program space. It's important that architecture can change to keep up with the needs of the people inhabiting a space. Take a look at your own home. Think about how you use the space inside and outside of your home. How does your family usually use the space? Do you play family games together in the living room? Do you spend most of your time on the back deck? How can you design the space you inhabit to better suit your needs? We are asking you to consider the space in your home and how you can reimagine it to make it your dream space. Hello, I'm Virginia Hammond and I'm a second year architecture student. There's a few questions to consider when you are designing your reimagined home and garden. What makes you feel at home? How do you feel about your own home? How do you move around within your home? What do you use your home for? What do you want your home to become through this project? Let's take a look at a few examples on how to get started on exploring your design ideas. Do you want the experiences of your space to be quiet and comfortable or energetic and exciting? Colorful or neutral? Large or small? Dark or bright? How do the rooms or spaces connect with each other and with the outdoors? How can you improve your home for function and for fun? It can be a little overwhelming to jump into a project like this, so we're going to show you how we start brainstorming and sketching to begin a project. The Faye and Gus Jones House, completed in 1956, is the first project by architect Faye Jones at the start of his private practice. Referred to by some as Faye's experiment, the house is important as the first trial of many of the ideas Jones would use and refine in his subsequent projects. Currently owned by the University of Arkansas and stewarded by the Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design, this simple, beautiful house is the embodiment of the organic design principle set forth by the architect in all his work. Today we're at the Gus and Faye Jones house to practice brainstorming. Let's sit down and get started. So what I'm going to be doing today is brainstorming an idea that I've been bouncing around in my head for how to manipulate the space that I'm in right here. And what I'm looking at is sort of this carport area that's on the house and I feel like it could be used in a much more effective way for the family, for whoever's living here, for friends, for dinner parties. So I'm gonna make a few different adjustments and really go through my process of designing, how I make iterations to my designs that I'm seeing in my head and how putting it on paper can really affect and inform the way you're thinking about spaces like this. So what I'm gonna be doing first is looking at this structural system made up of very natural rock and I really like that natural rock. I'm going to try to keep that but what I'm going to do is expand this what is essentially a balcony or porch on the second level of the house and I'm going to make that a lot deeper. I'm going to make this structural natural rock element longer and wider so it actually has some statement to it on the house and I'm going to put in some outdoor seating in that element and I'm gonna mimic the geometry of that to create these windows, which currently I don't feel are doing a whole lot for this house, this space. 
and make them into an access point, a connection point between this nice outdoor eating space we're trying to create and the interior of the house. And you might notice that these drawings, they certainly aren't pristine and I really don't intend them to be. I'm trying to get a good idea of the space and maybe even some of the textures here so that I can really relate it to what I'm seeing and to what I'm designing. So if I look at these wood paneling and where that meets glass and then where that meets this natural stone, maybe I do some quick sketches with that to show that this is natural stone. And then on one side, I do vertical, these quick gestural lines that kind of imply that wood. So what I'm thinking here is that if I have this wall on my left and then I'm extending this rock wall on my right, I kind of want those to be reflective of each other. So I have this very square profile, this very clean geometry profile that I'm putting into this rock wall. And I want to do almost the reflection of that against this wall. So then you're creating almost this, this spatial corridor. But another thing I'm doing here that I think might be interesting is if I have these, these two very clear metal, like I'm going to call them portals, these metal portals on either side. What is that achieving for me? Well, I think right here on this rock side, I think that could be a pretty interesting seating area. I think I would enjoy sitting in that if I had this big rock wall and there's just this aperture between that has this really sleek profiled metal edge and there's some seats in there and a nice table. I've already kind of drawn that. And that goes through the thickness of this wall. So on one end, you're looking back into your house and then you sit in this like between space and you're surrounded by rock and you can sit next to maybe the person, maybe your friend or your mom or dad are sitting in the space with you and you can look, we've got some nice foliage and trees out to my right here and you can come out here for dinner and eat and then just as easily you have shade here. Maybe it's really hot in summertime and there's sun directly above you but you're within this wall that's just very, it can be very comforting and very interesting experience for you and maybe you wouldn't find that other places in your house so that can become a special place. So now I'm going to walk you through some of these other ideas I've had from different points of view, different perspectives, looking at different parts of this design that can maybe help you guys when you're starting to brainstorm. So this is very similar to that plan that I showed you guys as I was drawing. And it's maybe even just a little bit more gestural. It has these very basic geometries with maybe some indications of those materials. This is just another perspective with that. And then I've made notes here, like this is in line with the door on the inside. And that there's changes in materials, like we talked about, between the stone on this side, this metal, and this wood. And that's indicated from this like looking head on perspective that we would see if we were standing in this portico. And you even see here the deck above. And this is what you're gonna be doing at your own homes. You're gonna be noticing you're going to be making marks and drawing and observing and then you're going to be making your own designs and maybe integrating them into your own home so that it's not an abrasive affront to your home but it's an integration with it. So now that we've gone through this process that I would use of adding additions to this house we use sort of this perspectival one-point perspective drawing method to explore interventions and new creations as well as a very rough plan look at this and I've walked through a few other drawings to give you guys a good idea of how to maybe start your own brainstorming sessions. Hey, my name is Nate Cole and I'm a second year, rising third year student at the University of Arkansas. So what we're gonna do when we get to a site and when we start thinking about designing is some site analysis. You can sketch some measurements in your sketchbook, um, taking say the measurement of your pace and then pacing off a wall to just get a rough estimate of the size of a space. So while you're thinking about this, think, you know, if I were designing my dining room, I would need to know maybe the basic amount of space that that would take based on how many people were in my family or say how big the dining table was and where I want to put the seating. So it's always good to have a rough idea of the size of a space that you're working in before you start this initial process. So I'm, what I'm going to be working on 
is the balcony on the second floor of Faye Jones house and I'm going to be working with some of the shadow quality and showing you guys some more sketching ideas and concepts. So I usually like to start with some charcoal and just some really gestural drawing and one thing that I find really fascinating about this site is um, shadow quality on the site. So you have a lot of foliage around for one that provides a lot of shadow but you also have the shadow quality under, uh, underneath the balcony uh, that provides a lot of shading for the carport and the first floor. And a gestural drawing, really messy is the key, especially if you're working with charcoal. So if you wanna do sort of an elevation and then a one point perspective view, you can get some interesting ideas going. So. The way that I initially thought of this design was sketching an elevation and then looking at, okay, when the sun hits this building, how are some harsh shadows created and where are shadows not? So you have the interesting um, placement of these vertical pieces across, for one, that has a cool little shadow quality as the sun hits it at an angle. And then right below that patio, you just have this very shaded space down here. If you want to do that perspective, you can take it back so that you can see the way that the shadows affect the planes in this area. And then behind the house, as you turn that corner, this patio extends out so you have even more shadow even after you leave the carport. So what I wanted to do is take these vertical rock elements on the side, kind of extend them upwards and extend this roof line out. So with that, you get more shadow and then you can also create some apertures if you'd like to have some moments of natural lighting. When I experimented with this more, I realized maybe you put a green roof up there. Maybe you have a little garden that you can tend to and a little walkway so you, that you can still reach this front part of that patio. So when I was working with that roof line and elevation here, you can see how elevation is a good way to experiment with shading. And that's one thing that I think pen and especially charcoal are really good medias for. You know, when I like to think about lighting and shadow, it's usually really loose. It's very um, perspectival. And I think, especially with this house, there are just a lot of really bold lines and some bold framing to go off of. So that's just another realm where you can maybe speed up your design process by just getting some of the major details that are already there. For the last segment here, these are just some more examples of the gestural drawing that I mentioned earlier that I did while initially looking at this site. Here you just have some loose charcoal work and you can see my early experimentation with shadow. And then you can use different color charcoal, different color pastel if you'd like to uh, highlight different things. This drawing here is to show maybe you use a different color or a different medium to communicate something else. So with here, I was using the black charcoal to create some shadow where here maybe you have the kind of burnt orange charcoal to accentuate the highlights. So I used that gestural method to kind of show where the sunlight hit this building the most. We've talked about maybe some gestural sketching ideas and maybe some quick ways to start confronting this um, design project. So hopefully you guys can take some of these ideas of light sketching, sketching an elevation and plan, and really apply them to your own designs. Today I'm going to talk to you about how I worked on my design process for this building. And I did kind of an addition. I did more of a tower and worked on the garden. And I'm going to show you how you can use color and trace paper to formulate your ideas for a project. For my design, I looked at the outside of the building and I thought that it needed a little more on the outside. I didn't want to mess too much with the inside, so I focused more on an addition. So here I went for more of a tower on the outside. and. If you can see here, the ceiling of the carport is actually a bright orange. So I wanted to kind of take that orange 
and add it onto the outside of the tower. So my tower is actually, it's a bit more of a whimsical aspect that I wanted to add to the house to kind of bring a bit more of an outdoor aspect. And here I just did a very basic perspective drawing of the outside of the building. And I went in and added more detail with pen and watercolor to kind of show emphasis on the areas that I want to pop. So I'm adding some very bright colors to the tower on the outside. My goal was to introduce a tower that tied together with the outdoor aspect. So I created a very tall tower to sit on the side of the building with stackable hammock area. And the way to get up for the hammocks is kind of a rock climbing wall along the back. So this shows that your designs don't necessarily have to be the most serious of designs. I mean, you can get kind of creative with it. Really, the sky's the limit. And here, I, you can also kind of, if maybe you like this design, but you want to go a little further. So trace paper is really valuable in this, is that you can just overlay it and then kind of re re-sketch the basic outline of this. And then maybe, maybe I like the tower, but I'd like to add a little more. I have all this outdoor garden space. So maybe, maybe I'd like to add just kind of like a, a waterfall down here. And it goes down the side of the tower and then it falls out into a little pool here. And maybe the pool is surrounded by like a little garden, some hedges along here. And this ties together with kind of the whimsical aspect of just throw a little pool there. You've got some extra space in your garden. So there's a waterfall on the side of the tower and you can just kind of add a pool there. And your drawings don't have to be perfect. I mean, I've done a very rough above view sketch of what I want kind of the tower with a little pool here to look like. And you can go very basic with it. And I like to add color just, I think it makes it more fun and it also shows what you're trying to bring across more, is that the main colors of this building are more kind of a brownish gray, the wood and the natural stone. And I bring those back in the stone around the pool. And then I have the pop of the orange paneling wood from the ceiling of the carport. When I was first starting this project, I started out reimagining spaces in my own home. And I liked to focus right off the bat on how to tie together the exterior and the interior. So I first drew this floor plan of my living room, kitchen, and the outdoor space. And a good way to wrap your head around the spaces is to just start with a really simple bubble diagram. So I've kind of color coded here of the main living area, the kitchen, there's a small dining area here and then a covered porch. And then you can use diagramming to kind of find connections between different parts. So right here I showed that this is all open between the kitchen and the dining. And then this is how you get from the inside to the outside. And my goal with my own home was to really open it up more. So another benefit of trace paper here is I had the basic floor plan of my house and I just overlaid trace paper over it and then sketched how I wanted it to change. So this whole wall that you can see through the trace paper, I got rid of in my design. I wanted to open it up more. So the living space is more over here now and I twisted the kitchen to go right here and made this wall glass. And then this wall is kind of a, like a bar seating area that can open up through the wall. I did a little sketch of that here. So you can see that this kind of opens up the threshold between the interior and the exterior more. An important part of design is that a lot of designers will design very different, in very different ways. So I do my drawings first with pencil and then I add pen and then I'll usually add color with markers or watercolor or colored pencil. And you don't have to stick to just one, it helps to be versatile. And if maybe if you don't like drawing or if it doesn't fully get across the visual for you, you can also resort to kind of a different form of modeling. Your models don't have to be perfect. This is what can be referred to as a sketch model. It's just to help get your ideas into a more 3D form. So I made this just with hot glue to show maybe like the exposed glass corners and an index card and I painted it. And these don't have to be very 
precise. They can be very rough. It was really just to help me visualize the 3D aspect of it. Those are just a few tips from me on how to get started with designing. Really, the sky is the limit. Be creative. Use a lot of different things. It helps to be versatile, and it helps to try new things. Hi, my name is Lisa Skiles. I'm a practicing architect and visiting faculty. The great thing about sketching is how fast it is. It's an amazing way to quickly get the, all the ideas in your head out on paper. With practice, it's an amazing tool. We hope you have enjoyed today's look at how to brainstorm your very own projects and to start reimagining your home, your spaces, and your landscapes. Enjoy the process. Do lots of sketches. It's okay if they're messy. And trust your ability. Dive in and enjoy. Thank you.